project that we have with the Herzog August Bibliothek in Wolfenbüttel in Germany is all about making available online, free to everyone, the riches of our medieval heritage, both in Germany and in Britain, and to explore culturally, intellectually, historically, that long history of interconnection that we have. Books, manuscripts are the best diplomats in the world helping us to overcome national boundaries. Our shared project has tried to do just that. This project is really important because it digitizes these unique sources, which both opens them up to academics across the globe, but also to members of the public. So it means that anyone can access these manuscripts at the click of a button, either on the project website or in the library's core digital platforms. The first stage of the digitisation journey is to select the manuscripts and assess their suitability. We'd like to digitise all these manuscripts from Germany, but they have to be in good enough condition to be handled. And that's where the initial assessment by a conservator to see if they're fit for photography and if not, whether anything can be done to make them suitable for the handling in the photographic studio. The Bodleian has several hundred medieval manuscripts made in Germany in the Middle Ages and they were in German monasteries until the 17th century when during the Thirty Years' War their libraries were dispersed and were picked up by the agents of Archbishop William Lord, Archbishop of Canterbury and Chancellor of Oxford University, who had them brought to Oxford in the 1630s. And so these manuscripts, in a sense, are refugees from a time of violence and turbulence in Germany. Our partner library, in Wolfenbüttel, is also digitising manuscripts which are also, in a sense, refugees because they were taken out of their religious houses um, at the time of the Protestant Reformation. And so by putting these manuscripts together digitally, you can reconstitute a medieval library on screen which are physically dispersed today. This is the first Bodleian digitisation project where we've used exclusively high resolution, medium format digital camera backs. Throughout the project we've been using this piece of equipment, the Grazer Cradle. It's a stand which holds the camera and the manuscript during photography. It's unusual in that you no know, glass or plastic is coming into contact with the surface of the page of the manuscripts. And so it's a fantastic tool for photographing the most fragile manuscripts that we have in our collections. The fore edge rests on this hollow bar, which is attached to a hose and then a vacuum unit. And that ensures that the page is parallel to the lens and completely still when we photograph it. We've been experimenting with direct lighting so that we can capture the colour of gold. Conventional lighting is at 40 degrees to the manuscript, but we found that the colour of the gold was often a dark grey or green. So in this case, I'm using a digitally controlled ring flash that reflects the gold leaf back to the lens and so that we can faithfully reproduce the colour of the gold. What we're trying to do when we're cataloguing manuscripts is to help people discover its textual contents, its decoration, its history. We do that by a detailed physical examination of the object. That information then goes into our online catalogue and it forms the basis of the record in the digital image library. So with a modern printed book, uh, the title page will tell you where and when it was printed, but it's very unusual for that to happen in manuscripts, so we have to do a lot more detective work. So with this manuscript, for example, the watermarks in the paper give us a good clue as to where and when it's likely to have been written. 
because we can compare the design with similar designs in paper used at known places and locations and dates and by doing that we can see that it's likely to have been used in southern Germany around about 1530 and that's, that's very probably where this manuscript was made. After cataloguing and photography are complete, there's a process that we call digitization, which is effectively creating some technical metadata of a team working behind the scenes, bring the images together into a digital object that can be accessed in the most efficient way possible on a number of digital platforms. So one really important aspect of this project is both academic and public engagement, raising awareness of the project in these new sources. And we've done that in a range of ways, from curators being at academic conferences, to promoting the sources on Twitter amongst the medievalists there, but also public engagement activities. The previous year has been hugely challenging for public engagement. Whereas most of our activity would be in person, in a physical space, the COVID pandemic has, has made that almost impossible to do. So we have had to think about a new way of working in online delivery. We planned a range of activity to engage different members of the, the public, from public talks, calligraphy workshops, online craft activities for families, and singing workshops. We decided to run a workshop which would um, allow people to engage through their screens in a way like in the Middle Ages. We were down in the crypt and we could sing from the manuscript. People sang along at home in front of their screens, so it was a virtual community that linked across the world. One of the biggest surprises of doing our work online is the increase in the number of people engaging with our activity and also where in the world that they're actually based. So usually we might have between 80 to 100 people at a physical activity. We're finding we're having 300 plus people attending our online events. And these people are truly global. They're in the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and all the way across Europe there is an audience and demand for online content and therefore we will be incorporating that into all of our future work. One of the things which I hope this project will show for the future is that through the use of digital technologies, through the partnerships between great research and cultural institutions, that we can bring our communities together and that although we may exist in different countries with different histories and different political boundaries, so much more unites us than separates us. And I hope that this project will be replicated many times with other institutions and I hope that the Bodleian will be part of that movement of collaboration between the great libraries of the world. <laughs>